So you are the only MP in Peterborough. You should be lonely. Unlike Randy, who get the other way and bomb with uh, Sohi. <laughs> he goes the other way and bomb with a red, with a blue guy. I used to think <laughs> that being in Ottawa would be difficult, but it's my colleagues that actually make me feel like I'm part of a new community now too. I don't just have to worry about missing my community back home. So no, these guys are, these guys make sure we're not lonely. Which is good. And I see you are too young, just too 1985. Young. 1984. Can okay. somebody fix that, please? <laughs> <laughs> or I could just stay 30 forever. Well, so still, what that is, is that what is impressive to know, which I would say congratulations for being Thank you. that young and aspiring to the highest office of the land. I was a just, minister. I was just happy being an MP. Uh, my aspirations <laughs> for minister have yet to really develop during the election. So, thank so you. So, minister for, for democratic institutions. What does that mean? What do you do? It's a relatively newer uh, ministry. It was formed under Paul Martin. And within Justin Trudeau's cabinet, my job is to pursue the priority of a more open and a more transparent government and ultimately to enhance the trust and confidence that exists between Canadians and their democratic institutions. So it, part of it is through electoral reform, part of it is through reform within the Senate appointment process, elections, uh, how they're run, how debates are run, how um, money is spent during elections and between elections, and conversations like this, so letting Canadians know that they can be a part of their democratic institutions. That means you don't see a lot of people like us in the street. You are more dealing with parliamentarians and MPs and bureaucrats and stuff like that. Well, do you see a lot of people on the street, or do you have that much interaction with them? Do you have that much work to do? <laughs> So one of the things that we're all warned about when we get elected is the Ottawa bubble and how important it is for us to stay connected to our communities and to everyday Canadians. No one is more adamant about that than our Prime Minister. Uh, in fact, at the last retreat, that was uh, the big takeaway message for all of us is we got elected on a promise to do politics differently to listen to Canadians, to stay connected to their realities, and we have to deliver on that promise. So I would say that in the last few weeks, I've probably experienced something that very few Canadians experience, which is start touring the country, and not just hear from people on the streets, but hear from people in Iqaluit and in Whitehorse and in Yellowknife and in Kitimat and in on Saturna Island and in Vancouver and in Edmonton. And so part of why the Prime Minister has asked me to go across the country is to make sure that I'm really connected to the realities of Canadians. That's good. So you were born in Afghanistan. Was that in Kabul? Herat. Herat. How far is that from Kabul? Like couple of hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you left Kabul and you lost your um, father at the early stages? I didn't leave Kabul. I'm from Herat. Yes. And you left that and you lost your father at the early, at, an, at a younger age. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how have you coped since then? Uh, as well as I could have. Um, and it's still difficult. Um, yeah. Just being uh, in your 30s or 31 years. Yeah, on election day, I wish he was there. Uh, the day I was sworn in, I wish he was there. Um, my mom came to 26 debates during the campaign, and I'm sure that she would have liked it if he was there. On days where this job gets difficult or just life gets difficult, I wish he was there, but he's not here but he's counting on me to get this right. And I hope to do right by him. When I told uh, my colleagues that uh, you were born in 19, 
84, not 85. <laughs> they were curious to meet and, and listen to you talk. <laughs> so what will you say to young women and girls who certainly, as I was told uh, in the last uh, event we covered called Daughters Day here in Edmonton, which is to celebrate women and support women, that uh, women, the world is a men's world and women are uh, disproportionately uh, not favored in lots of things, but you have been fortunate and uh, to get to a good level. What is it to women who want to be like you? Well, I'd say this is a great country and that here in Canada, anything is possible. My message to women and girls is to be kind to one another, to support one another, to encourage one another, to take big leaps, So in that mountain recently, we've had a lot of issue with uh, racial uh, discrimination on the streets of the city, some captured on camera. Do you have such kinds of things, such uh, situations in Peterborough? I think racial tensions exist everywhere. But what's unique about a place like Canada is that communities and governments are actively working on addressing those tensions. So in Peterborough, Kawartha, um, we have a partnership council made up of different sectors, different levels of government, uh, citizens, different faith groups, and they get together every other month and their mandate is to create a more welcoming uh, Peterborough. And they have done that. Peterborough did a really good job uh, with the response to the Syrian refugee crisis, for example. Uh, when the local mosque, um, there was a fire at the mosque and folks believed that it was perhaps hate motivated. Instead of falling apart, the community came together and raised a lot of money in 30-something hours to cover the damages. And out of the ashes of that disaster came a stronger, more united community. And the reason Peterborough is able to respond well to situations like that, the reason Peterborough is able to welcome newcomers like me and our Syrian friends and neighbors is because there is a group, there's a concerted effort of individuals who are constantly coming together and coming up with ways to build that resiliency so that they can address um, challenges when they happen and they can take advantage of opportunities like welcoming uh, Syrian neighbors into our communities when those opportunities pre present themselves. Okay, and I also okay, realize... Um, unfortunately, we are running low on time, so last question. Last question, yeah. So I also realized that you, were, you came uh, second in the mayor election before you ran for uh, MP, or to ran to become an MP. How did that uh, motivate you going forward after uh, a setback like that? I lost by 1% of the vote, so 1,337 votes. But 9,879 people counted on me. They believe that I could advocate on their behalf and their kids and their grandkids. And they invested their hopes and dreams on to me. And so when I started out, I thought I was going to be a nuisance candidate. I just wanted to raise the issues that weren't going to be raised otherwise. But on election night, those results made me realize that I wasn't alone. And then every day after, I felt a growing sense of responsibility. Of all these people, these 9,879 people, I was carrying them everywhere I went. And so that 
knowing that they believed in me, knowing that they're counting on me, helped motivate me uh, to work up the courage to throw my hat into another race. And it's it, and you're here. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, that's the end. All right. Congratulations, and hope you have work. Thank you. Pray for me.